Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with an explication request on duration. Uh, rank the following bonds in order of shortest to longest duration. This is a concept on 6566. It's about volatility of bonds. You know, um, a lot of uh, bond geeks get upset with the teeter-totter. They're saying, Dean, it's not that simple as a, a teeter-totter. So duration reflects the fact that that volatility uh, is different for different bonds. Now, usually what you could do here, and on the test will be easier. This is a, a Kaplan question trying to stretch your mind a little bit. But the first thing I would warn you is make sure RTFQ. Now, what that means is read the full question. So this says from the shortest to the longest. Now, usually on your exam, if you do encounter this, low probability, but it would be an aim and shoot point and click question where you would simply shop the answer set. They'd be asking about the longest or highest duration, and you'd pick the bond with the longest maturity and the lowest coupon. But in this case, it's a little more uh, complicated because we got some bonds. Now, this particular test taker who sent in the email request uh, said they did it in reverse order, and I think that's not a bad way to proceed. So, you know, I got to make sure I'm on the right side of the question. I think right out of the gate, I would have gone, okay, well, I know the one that's going to have the highest volatility is going to be the bond with no income stream. You know, income streams act as stabilizers on investments, whether we're talking about stocks or bonds or any investment. Investments with income streams are more stable in price than investments with no income stream. Because as that investment goes down, somebody would buy it to simply capture the income stream. So as we see here, there is no income stream to stabilize uh, the price of the JKL zeros of 2035. So uh, if I had my answer set, I'd be looking for something that had Roman numeral four at the end. Now, by the way, that could have been uh, helpful. That's because maybe there's only one that has Roman numeral four at the end, in which case I say thank you mu very much. Now, usually that would be 50-50. And I would tell you that on the exam, there is a lot fewer, a lot fewer of these uh, multiples of multiples than there are on the actual test itself. Okay, I'm just trying to put a comma in there. <laughs> I'll put the commas later. Okay, so we've got our, uh, our thing that comes last in terms of shortest to longest duration. Uh, Roman numeral four has the longest duration. So now I'm looking at the uh, maturities and coupons. And I say, well, there's not much here. I got a 39, I got a 40, I got a 41. And then the next thing I have is a 5% coupon. So a little more complicated in that we have these maturities. But again, that 5% coupon, that lower coupon is going, let's just put down a different color, is going to uh, make that one come next. So again, I'm getting closer and closer. I'm increasing my odds as I go along here in terms of what's going on. So I'm going to take now Roman numeral three. Let's put that there. And yeah, we'll put a comma there. And so now I'm looking for, I'm getting closer here. I'm looking for that. Now that again might have been helpful uh, because now I could, uh, you know, shop the answer set once again. All right, so now I got a 50-50. And I'm looking at uh, Roman numeral one and I'm looking at Roman numeral two. And again, I'm uh, saying the maturities are pretty close. And this is why Kaplan kind of stretching your mind on this, uh, this question because they're so close. So, you know, I think about it in a lot of ways to think about it, but I think, okay, so I'm going to get $90 a year and I'm going to get $80 a year. I'm taking the nominal yield times the par to figure out how much annual interest I'm getting. And so as I look at bond one and bond two, I say, okay, so uh, bond one pays me 8% and I'm going to get that 8% to 2040, that's $80, or I'm going to get $90 and I'm also going to get it for one more year. So it seems to me that the, the next one I'm even going to go with, even though there's another year, I'm going to say, okay, well, I think uh, the one that would go next is going to be Roman number one. And again, I'm basing that on this idea of 8% one year less. In other words, I'm doing a re reverse attractiveness, so to speak, in the secondary market. Uh, tough one. Now, if I take one, one as being next, well, then that means I'm kind of stuck here now with my answer, which is 
And so that's what I would have said the answer would be. Uh, I would say the answer is two, one, three, and four. Very much a, a tough one, but I think we could have worked our way through it at least to a 50-50. I don't think, again, you're going to encounter uh, that kind of a judgment level question as it relates to duration on the 65 and 66. I'll put this in the 65-66 playlist as a practice problem. I think it'll be aim and shoot, point and click. You're just going to go to the answer set. And that's usually the longest or highest duration, most volatility. And you should definitely know as a test taker that the bonds with the longest maturity and lowest coupons have the uh, greater volatility and the fancy word. I would just think of the duration as the fancy word for volatility. If every time you hear duration, you translate volatility, I think you'd be in good shape on the exam itself. Uh, I would also just warn you that a lot of people in 65, 66 underestimate the investment component of it a little bit of hubris perhaps or whatever it is. So make sure you're solid and particularly on bonds. There are bond questions. Uh, I would be prepared for this as well as a bond at a premium and recognizing uh, yield to call. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Remember inch by inch, your series 65 or 60 cents is a cinch. Uh, yard by yard, your 65 or 66 is hard. See you for the next explication. I have quite a few requests here. So I'll be working my way through them over the weekend and putting them in the appropriate playlist. Bye-bye.